There she comes. All right, let's talk about Duramax injector cups. I see a lot of people talking about these and screwing things up, and I didn't understand how they worked until I just took this apart, and now you can see how they work and see how they fail. So your injector slides into this cup, seats in there like that, and then this obviously slides into your cylinder head, but there's two modes of failure here that can happen. So let's start with the injector to the cup interface, right? You have this copper washer that fits over your injector and it pushes all the way down into the bottom of this cup. And your injector's held down by, your injector hold down creates that downwards force. What can happen is if this copper washer does not have a good seal against the bottom of this cup, you will have combustion gases blow up past the injector, up around the injector shaft, through the top of the cup and ultimately into your crankcase. So this could create a false amount of blow by. In this case, it looks like this thing carboned up so bad that it kind of stopped itself, but this injector was very hard to get off the cup because of that. And finally, this O-ring up here just keeps crap out of the cup. So this O-ring isn't really functional. It doesn't do anything to hold compression gases back. That's all in the copper crush gasket down here, but this does keep oil and other debris from getting in there. So ultimately, you pull out your injector, it should look clean like this. Now, they don't always look that way. This is one that came fresh out of the motor. It's got a little stuff on it, but nothing bad. This one was sealed properly. Nothing wrong there. All right, then your other failure mode could be two things. One, you'll be putting uh, compression into your cooling system, which would be really bad. And two, you could also put coolant into your oil if these O-rings are bad. So first, with the compression seal, just like the injectors, this tapered cone here presses against the cylinder head to create a seal from the combustion chamber to this cup. And I'll flip this head over and show you that shortly. Secondly, these O-rings that fit at the top of the bore here, these keep the coolant within this space not entering uh, up under the valve cover and getting into your oil. So let's take a look at that. So this bore here has a injector cup installed and this one doesn't. So you can see the small steel ring protruding here. That is the tip of the injector cup. That tip does not actually seal to the cylinder head. It just kind of pushes in there. There's no actual seal there. On the other side of this combustion chamber is a tapered seat that fits this taper. That's why it's important that this is extremely clean and not deformed in any way so that fits the cylinder head bore. So looking down the top of the cylinder head, you can see down there the counter bore and taper that the cup presses into. You can also see here the surface in which those two O-rings land to seal that off. So this whole void down here is all coolant jacket. And that allows coolant to surround the injector cup and cool the injector. So this is a critical surface here. This is a critical surface here. These have to be absolutely spotless. Finally, looking down the bore of a good injector cup, see how shiny and clean that is? That bottom face down there is where the crush washer lands on. And secondly, the bottom of the injector needs to be very clean right here as well. And that's where the crush washer seals against that. Finally, this upper lip up here is where your O-ring for the top of your injector lands. This is probably the least critical seal. If you were gonna screw one up, this would be the one to screw up uh, because it really won't ruin your day. You won't even notice until you go to take the thing apart next time. Now, whether you go ahead and decide to reseal your cups or not, is up to you. I don't have a theory on it yet, but since I have this one cylinder head off, I am going to reseal these four. This side of the engine, I did not. In hindsight, maybe I should have resealed those. Maybe it'll work. Maybe I'll get burned on it. You don't know until you try. So to get these cups out, if you have the head off, it's very easy. If you take a brass uh, quick connect fitting for a compressor, fits perfectly on top of the cup and you can drive it out without damage. You wanna use something softer than stainless because you don't wanna deform the cup in any way. You can also pop these out from the top with a special puller. 
So if I ever have issues with the ones on the truck, I will do that, but because I can get these from the bottom, why not? I keep these cups in order. I don't want to mix them up what bore they go in. And I'm inspecting the ceiling surface here. That one looks good. There's no compression leaks evident on any of these. So likely, likely if I were to leave these in as is, I would have no problem. But because I'm here, why not clean them up, make them perfect. The cylinder head is all cleaned up to my liking. So it's time to drop the cups back in. First, I like to keep these O-rings nice and greased up because rolling an O-ring here, like I said, is going to put coolant in your oil and you're going to be pissed about it. So I lube these things up real good because you want them to slide in really nice. Now, the controversial part, or at least in my head, is do you stick these in dry or do you put red Loctite on them? Everyone on the internet says to put red Loctite on them. I did not put red Loctite on the other cylinder head I did. I cleaned everything up real nice and stuck it in there. So for sake of experimentation and uh, my own expense and aggravation, you guys can laugh at me in the comments. I'm gonna put red Loctite on this cup. It's really starting to rain out there. A nice thick bead of red Loctite on this cup and drop her in. Personally, I don't think the red Loctite is needed. I think that that taper fit and a properly torqued injector will hold this thing together. I think that was GM's intention. But over the years, people started using Loctite with very good results. Whether those results were needed or not, I don't know. But people have been doing it. I don't think it's going to hurt. So we'll see able to push one o-ring in by hand for the remainder let's grab a, one of my oem injectors cleaned up the tip a little bit take off the top o-ring so it doesn't actually press into the cup we're just going to use this to press the cup in and the factory hold down bolt to gently press that cup in let's see if you can see it moving there there she goes literally this is a two finger operation very very gentle it shouldn't take any force at all to go in if you lube those up and now the cup is bottomed. We could just go ahead and leave it there or we can pull it apart now. The one thing I want to mention is if you're Loctiting these, you should probably Loctite them right before you install your injectors because you don't want the Loctite to set up before the cups are torqued down and you don't want to torque them down and then pull the injector out and then have them set up with no preload on them. So I'm literally next step, I'm throwing this head back on this engine. So I'm just popping these injector cups down, getting them seated, and then it's going right on the motor. My new injectors are going in and they're going to hold them down through the curing process. Ready to install injectors. Look down them bores. See how perfectly shiny everything is? Flawlessly clean. And I think that is a huge part of this. Then I lay the copper washer down in there. That way there's no guessing if it fell off the tip or it got dislodged, whatever. I make sure it's totally seated against the bottom and then I will carefully slide the injector through. All right, finally, put a bunch of O-ring lube on this O-ring. Like I said, this isn't the most you know devastating one if it fails, but still, if you can, why not? And you're gonna carefully drop this down. You'll feel it drop right through that copper crush washer. And just like setting the injector cups, I like to look in the side and watch that O-ring and make sure everything's okay. The funny thing is, you can even push this injector down and you'll see the, the ratchet drop. Watch. See that? It's because I'm seating it further in the cup by hand. So really, this is a delicate process, right? If you need to use more than two fingers to seat this, you got a problem with the O-ring. This thing just drops right in here. Look at this. Boom, until it seats. Now, the copper crush washer is seated, but I can tell that the O-ring is totally in the cup. Now we're ready to torque this. Another point to mention about Duramax injector hold downs is if you look carefully here, you notice that this seat 
is not flat. It's actually slightly conical. It's concave. And if you look at the bottom of this bolt, you'll see that it's convex. And the reason for that is this hold down needs to have some pivot to it. Right? You land on a metal boss on the cylinder head here, and the remaining force drives the injector downwards. But it needs to be able to move a little to do that effectively. So you'll see that this interface here is actually a slight pivot. So after I seat the injector, I do back it off a quarter turn and then finger tight it again. That allows it to center this hold down by the bolt. That way, you know, if you start up here and you crank her down and, and something's, you know, something's a little off or whatever because you had to move the injector too much, giving it that quarter turn to loosen and bring it back down ensures that when you torque it, all of that torque force will be going straight down the body of the injector and sealing the injector cup and the injector to the cup. All right guys, thanks for watching this video. Uh, that's really all I know about injector cups in Duramax engines. The reason I made this video is because I didn't quite understand why they fail and how they fail and exactly how they work. And it's one of those things that until you get your hands on it and you see how each surface seals and what each surface seals to, then you really understand what they do, how to make them not fail and how they should be installed, I guess. So um, I'm really not sold on the whole Loctite deal down, in the, uh, down on the taper near the combustion chamber. I think if you know everything's mechanically sound there and you have two properly machine fit tapers, the Loctite doesn't do anything. But if it makes you feel better, great. Maybe it works and I'm missing something here. I don't know. But uh, anyway, I put it on this cylinder head. We'll see what happens. If it fails, you guys can all laugh at me. I'll be on the side of the interstate somewhere in America trying to reseat and reseal an injector cup um, with my butt crack hanging out. So. We'll just have to see about that, but I have a feeling that that Loctite really doesn't do anything. Um, so anyway, thanks for watching Spank Ranch Garage. I'll talk to you next time.